Bwrw da i chi gyd a diolch i chi am y cyfleid oedd i siarad ydych chi hefyd ynglyn â gwaith estyn yn ystod y pandemig. Yn ogystal ar cynllunio ar lygu ar y cyd gydag ar y lygaeth gofal Cymru y tymor yma ymlaen. So, good morning to you all. Thank you for the opportunity to come and share, some of, share with you some of Estyn's work throughout the pandemic, as well as the plans for restarting inspections with CIW from this term. So, firstly, I'd like to share with you some of Estyn's work during the pandemic and our findings from our engagement activities with settings and other stakeholders. Throughout the pandemic, we've continued our engagement with the sector and have aimed to speak to or visit nearly every setting that is funded for delivering early education. Since September 2020, we have made around 429 engagement phone calls, made 65 engagement visits to settings all around Wales, as well as holding 12 area meetings where we've discussed issues facing the sector with early years advisory teachers and representatives of umbrella organisations. We've published the findings of this activity in a series of reports that are available on our website. Um, and actually, it's good, very good timing because the most recent one was published this morning. So um, if you get a chance to look at that, that's been published on our website this morning. And as part of these reports, we've also published a range of cameos of good practice. And I'd like to share some of those with you um, today as well. So initially, our work concentrated on the well-being of children and staff, how setting supported learning during lockdown periods, established provision following lockdown periods. This has evolved over time to find out more about how settings are now adapting their teaching and their curriculum as they prepare for curriculum for Wales, opportunities for professional learning, leadership, and how settings are preparing for the additional learning needs and education and tribunal act. However, throughout all our engagement, the well-being of children and staff has been paramount. So in the next few minutes, I would just like to give you a brief overview of some of our findings from our work, and apologies if you've heard some of these before, but also share with you some cameos of interesting practice. And again, I'm really sorry, but I do not have time to go into details about lots of our findings in this presentation or all of the, the different um, in cameos that we've shared, but please find them in our, the reports on our website. So for well-being, generally settings told us that children returned to settings following lockdowns happy and excited to see their friends and staff. They adapted quickly to all the new procedures and routines. And in some cases, leaders felt that children had benefited from some time at home and returned confident, inquisitive and ready to learn. Leaders and practitioners, you have all prioritised children's well-being. Um, throughout this pandemic and leaders have told us in the autumn term how practitioners especially have used their understanding of children's emotional well-being to provide purposeful activities to help children share their feelings with others. For example, one of our settings in Cardiff used the, the book The Colour Monster as a central theme to its activities when children returned to the setting. Practitioners used the story to encourage children to talk about any anxieties and confusion they had due to the pandemic and what was going on in the world around them. Using the story as a prompt, they encouraged children to express themselves and their feelings using the colours. And practitioners felt that this helped children, the children's well-being, and made them more aware of their emotions and better able to express their feelings. Settings and support partners, so our early years advisory teachers and umbrella organisations told us, however, that more children appear to have greater social and communication difficulties and are less independent because of the activity, and that's a focus of lots of their work um, this term. Throughout Wales, different, different factors have had an adverse impact on staff wellbeing, and we're aware of that from a range of personal experiences of COVID-19 to pressures due to job security and keeping up to date with revised guidance. The well-being of staff has been a high priority for leaders in settings. During the spring term especially, leaders in a minority of settings told us that morale was low. However, leaders told us for a range of initiatives and support put in place to help staff through this period, such as using supervision and appraisal processes to provide opportunities for the staff to discuss their concerns and difficulties. We received many cameos on this, and one was, for example, um, in Rhonda Cynataf, where uh, leaders set time to talk meetings across their nurseries. This provided staff with the opportunity to talk to each other, share concerns, and to provide support to each other. Leaders provided all staff with a wellbeing pack, which included items to encourage them to take a break, such as biscuits, a tea bag, and a tea light. 
And the bag also included helpful numbers that signposted staff to wellbeing support if needed. This was one of the many different initiatives put in place in settings to support staff wellbeing throughout the pandemic. During this term, leaders told us the staff wellbeing had generally improved. Um, for example, with lateral flow tests and the increase in staff vaccinated, alleviating concerns. And throughout the autumn term, leaders have continued to prioritise staff wellbeing and continue to do so. Many settings choose, chose to close at the beginning of the first lockdown, mainly due to the low numbers of children eligible to attend. In January 2021, many reopened and only a minority stayed closed due to issues such as high case numbers in the their area or problems with staffing. During these lockdown periods, most settings made efforts to support children and parents and carers using a wide range of methods, such as the use of social media and delivering packs of activities and resources to families in their homes. In one setting, for instance, they provided practical support to vulnerable children and their families with staff collecting household items and preparing food parcels for families, especially the ones struggling financially. And in most cases, leaders feel that the working relationship between settings and parents appears to have strengthened. As settings have reopened, leaders and practitioners worked hard to re-establish provision for children attending settings, whilst still ensuring strict infection control and protective measures in accordance with national and local guidance. Most practitioners have told us they continue to plan suitable and engaging activities for children, despite the ongoing disruption caused by COVID-19. And as times moved on, more and more settings have reintroduced furniture and resources such as sand and water activities. And a very few settings have now started to welcome visitors back into the setting. During the autumn term, a majority of leaders have started to ensure that children have increased access to authentic learning resources such as everyday household items in the different indoor and outdoor areas. Where this approach is new, leaders have adapted their practice in line with the principles of the Curriculum for Wales, with a greater emphasis on authentic learning experiences. For example, in one setting we visited, the home corner was stocked with a telephone, real china cups and plates, real utensils for the kitchen and real vegetables for the children to explore. Most leaders have start, stated that they have increased the use of the outdoors for learning COVID-19 pandemic and in the strongest cases children have chosen where they would like to play outdoors regardless of the weather conditions and were encouraged to dress themselves suitably for example by fetching and putting on waterproof clothing and wellington boots and this has provided children with valuable opportunities to access the outdoors in all weather conditions however a few support partners have said that they thought the outdoors was used well during the warmer months although they, they, they are worried that some places are less keen to use the outdoors now the weather's become colder. Many support partners have felt that during the pandemic, a minority of settings have embraced the opportunity to try new ways of working in preparation for the curriculum for Wales. There's been a much greater focus on play and play-based learning and more opportunities to respond to children's interests. In a few instances, settings have moved away from a strict daily routine to respond more purposefully to children's needs. As a result, children are more engaged in their learning and sustain concentration for longer periods. And a minority of leaders have told us that they feel their teaching approach is now less formal and much more responsive. For example, one setting has told us about how they, they become more child-led in their approach to teaching than previously. They're following the children's interests and providing fewer adult-led activities. For example, when a child has showed an interest in bones and skeletons, staff have built on this through having x-ray pictures of it and purchasing books on x-rays and the body to extend to the children's knowledge. And practitioners feel that this was empowering for the children as it increased a sense of ownership over their own learning and allowed them to develop their own interests and share their knowledge and interests with their peers and practitioners. So many leaders have told us they continue to provide a balance of child initiated and adult led activities. And even in cases where settings are experimenting with a more responsive approach, most still continue to use a wide range of teaching methods. For example, they continue to use circle time to dis discuss feelings, read stories. In and in the strongest cases, practitioners ensure the whole group sessions were succinct, have a lively pace and keep children engaged. In experimenting with approaches for curriculum for Wales, a, mi a minority of settings no longer provide pre-planned focus tasks led by practitioners to increase the emphasis on children leading their own learning. 
Leaders in Welsh medium settings have told us that they continue to identify opportunities to introduce Welsh vocabulary through a combination of planned activities and responding to children's interests. For example, facilitating a game of word bingo related to the current theme. Throughout the period of the pandemic, leaders have told us they've worked hard to maintain a consistent focus on ensuring professional learning opportunities for all practitioners. They've ensured access to a wide range of practical support re relating to elements of health and safety, including risk assessments and safeguarding. And many have told us, and practitioners have told us, they have questions on different topics. For example, supporting elements of well-being, understanding the impact of adverse childhood experiences, and promoting Welsh language development. Most leaders told us about the wide range of activities that have been provided to support them as they develop their approaches to the curriculum for Wales. They feel that training opportunities have been useful and have provided an opportunity for practitioners to develop their understanding of the curriculum and how it should impact on their practice. So that's just a snapshot really of our engagement work and our engagement work throughout the pandemic has provided us with valuable opportunities to talk to you about your work. We've really appreciated the open and honest discussions we've had with all leaders, practitioners and support partners and to hear about if you work diligently to overcome difficulties for each other and providing care and support to children and their families. So I hope that I can now pass over to Kevin who will talk about some of CIW's work um, during this time.